In 2021, Google announced that it would replace advertising ID on mobile devices and restrict the use of third-party cookies in its Chrome browser. Now that's a big deal. Android has over 85% of the global mobile OS market and cookies are the fuel that keeps the Google Ads machine going. They're a bit like this guy, if you think about it, and just as greedy. So in this video, we are going to cover four things. Number one, what is Google Topics? Number two, how does it work? Number three, how does it compare to Apple's mobile privacy push? And number four, why this really does affect all of us. What is Google Topics? Let's take it straight from the horse's mouth. On their Chrome developers website, Google's engineers say that the aim of Google Topics is to enable interest-based advertising without having to resort to tracking the sites a user visits. Okay, so let's pick that apart. Interest-based advertising is what they want to move to. What is that? Well, interest-based advertising is a type of personalized advertising where an ad is selected for a user based on their interests, which are inferred from the sites that they have recently visited. After floating the idea of Flock, Federated Learning of Cohorts, which looked a bit like this, as a solution last year, Google has now decided against that plan. Long story short, it didn't go far enough to protect user privacy. It would still have been possible to de-anonymize the data. That's what it is. So how does it work? This is the process as it stands. Your browser will take note of the topics of the sites that you visit. So you might visit websites that are about music or fashion, or in the example Google uses, sports. If you visit a lot of sports sites, then topics will infer that you like sports. Then you can be shown ads about this topic without the site ever needing to know who you are. All they really need to know is that you're interested in sports. So each user will have five topics at a time with Google deleting and replacing the topics every three weeks. You will be grouped together with people that have the same interests so that you blend in with the crowd. Google also says it will send a randomized topic along with your profile to try and keep things anonymous and it will do that about 5% of the time. The data will be stored on user devices too, so it's not sent to the cloud for processing. You, as a user, will have control over your topics and you can remove some if you like or you can opt out of this program altogether. So in a nutshell, instead of cookies operating in the background, as they would on the left here, users will have some sense of control. They will see a list of their own interests on the right. You might think the selection of topics is pretty broad and it is, but Google says analyzing additional information such as full URLs or page contents might enable more relevant ads, but would also reduce privacy. So there's that trade-off again. There are 349 of the topics in the taxonomy listed on GitHub already, and you can have a look at them. Google does expect this to grow quite rapidly, but wants to keep them under control so that sensitive topics don't start getting in there. As it stands, there are topics including billiards and zoos, aquariums, and preserves. So they've got quite a few bases covered as it stands. You might hear all of this referred to as the Topics API. And this is in fact the central component of this whole technology. It's a JavaScript API with one method, document.browsingtopics. As this diagram explains, when a user visits a website that displays ads, so let's say a news publisher, that site's ad tech platform must decide which ads to show the user. So the ad tech platform makes a call using the topics API to get the topics of interest for the user and the response helps it to select appropriate ads to display. So if the response comes back and says, you're really into billiards, it will use that data to find the best match from the list of advertisers who have chosen to bid on those millions of billiards mad consumers. 
lots of interested parties, including the EU, privacy commissions worldwide, regulators and big tech rivals, are keen to point out the privacy limitations of third party cookies. And that's fine to point out, but the real challenge lies in devising a new method that can protect privacy, but still create enough revenue through advertising or something else to keep most content free to access. It's still unclear that all of this can happen simultaneously. We can't have our cookie and eat it, so to speak. Sorry. Google is trying to develop a working option, but it keeps pushing the launch date for any alternative back. It now sits at 2023, 2024-ish at the latest count. In the meantime, we may have overlooked just how delicate this infrastructure is. Because Google, Facebook and Apple are the headline acts, we see it as their problem to solve and given their colossal size, we're happy to leave them to it. But the risk here is not just that Google and Facebook, perish the thought, might lose a tiny fraction of their market value. A huge number of businesses depend on these companies to reach their audience. In fact, they have built businesses on the assumption that they will be able to access cheap, effective ads. Facebook has tried to make this argument, but because it's Facebook, it seems overly self-serving. But if we take a broader perspective, we can understand that this affects a lot more people than just Zuckerberg and co. The e-commerce platform Shopify has lost 45% of its market value since the turn of the year. There are lots of reasons for that. The end of the pandemic, bringing retail in person back, supply chain issues and so on. But one big contributing factor has been Facebook's troubles after Apple's privacy changes, which we'll get to in a moment. Shopify is one of the most popular e-commerce platforms for small businesses, many of whom use Facebook to market and sell their wares. All of these platforms are interconnected in ways we typically ignore. It fits our narrative to see them as simple adversaries. In a sense, we fail to move on from the zero-sum view of corporate competition that held sway in the 20th century. Apple made sweeping changes to its privacy policies with the introduction of app tracking transparency, which gives iPhone users the option not to be tracked by apps. The Financial Times reports that about 80% of iPhone users politely decline the option to be tracked, and who can blame them when it's put to them in these terms? You might still be struggling to sympathise at this point, as I'll admit I was, but of course this all comes back to the fundamental promise of a free internet. Clobbering Facebook is a hoot, until we realise that we can no longer separate Facebook from the rest of the world. And the same applies to Google. Over 90% of Android apps are free, to download at least, but they're also ad supported. When Google brings in its own mobile focused privacy changes, and topics will be a big part of this, that may no longer be a sustainable scenario. Something has to give. Online ads can be very annoying. They are, and let's just be honest for a moment here, usually awful. But they are a necessary evil, as in they are necessary to the somewhat acceptable functioning of the current machine. So if you want to replace advertising, you can't just replace one company's way of doing it. You need to rethink the whole machine and the way that it operates. Take away his cookies and he needs something else to eat. This is a soft proposal when what businesses want and need are clear answers. Now, Google could rightly say that it didn't want to pose the questions in the first place and now it's tasked with coming up with a magical answer that will rethink the whole of the online economy. But it took this position of its own volition, lest the regulators step in and dictate the terms for Google instead. Yet, as noted earlier, this story is not really about them. Like it or not, it's in all of our interests to apply collective thinking to this challenge or to come up with a working alternative. We all exist in the same ecosystem after all. <laughs>